Welcome, welcome. Today we have a beautiful subject at hand, but before we dig into it, let's just lay some ground rules, I right? I'm not necessarily here to shit on or complain about Madam Web. On my channel here, I just talk about things that pique my interest or bring me joy. In this case, I like Marvel and I just want to see them do well. And Madam Web is kind of a hot topic right now, so it makes sense to speak on this. Except I'll do it in my way. And for this video, I want to talk about the character, how I felt about the movie, including the negatives, and highlight some things that I found rather cool, I guess I could say. And potentially what could be interesting for the future. I have a haircut I'm not too happy with, but I think from the test footage that I shot, I look decent enough, so I'll take this off. It might be a mistake doing that. Happy Leap Day. Let's get into Sony's latest creation. I have been sort of a caveman lately and not in tune with internet noise, but prior to watching, I had heard the dialogue was bad and the editing was weird. Now I like Morbius for specific reasons of the action and visuals being nice. To me, my opinions, those two things were memorable enough for me to mention at this point in time after one year and only watching it once. The story is not the best, but there's a saving grace in everything. Now with this in mind, I kept the same standard. That movie had nice CGI and action, so this one should too, I hope. <laughs> well, the action wasn't anything to write home about, but they got me with their visuals of Cassie Webb's powers. The connection to what I assume is the web of life and destiny, we've seen it explored in Across the Spider-Verse, and explains why the three Peters know the phrase, great power, great responsibility. At least that's where I think her physical powers come from, but nonetheless, it was freaking beautiful. More positives later because I want to address the more clunky things that I myself noticed. Starting with, yes, the dialogue. <laughs> the delivery of some of the lines, especially in the beginning, seemed kind of off. Her, there's a point where her mom goes, thank you for the umbrella. <laughs> there are a lot of times where this movie just falls silent and there is no dialogue. Again, in the beginning when Cassie and Adam Scott who I had no idea was in this movie. Where was that information? I missed out. They, the two of them were having a conversation and he goes something like, I think it was, I have a girl and Cassie says, who is it? And they sort of just smile at each other and then eat. <laughs> Sirens were going off on my brain immediately as this happened. Towards the end of the movie, they're, they're in the hospital and a nurse walks into Cassie's room and she asks, is everyone here immediate family? Which, you know, Cassandra replies and says, yes, they are, they're mine. And then the nurse just goes and walks out. I refuse to believe that's what she came in for. Is she not going to check up on Cassie's conditions and her progress and her health? There's, what if no one was in the room? So she's just gonna walk in, smile and then walk out? And when was Emma Roberts included in this movie? I had no, dude. <laughs> oh my, fr I'm getting all the negatives out of the way quick since this is the popular thing people talk about and I wanna show my understanding of the things that went wrong here. The editing in the beginning was quick with cuts after cuts, but no lie, it was kind of refreshing. It truly gave off a 2003 atmosphere. This movie is by no means one created to garner Oscar attention, but to create Sony's vision of their own Spider-Verse world, the universe thingamajig. Madam Web has iffy dialogue, quick cuts here and there, and a story that made me wonder after a certain point, like halfway, where are they gonna do with the rest of the runtime? <laughs> a lot of this was getting the girls safe, which is a defense tactic, but the offense department didn't hit hard until the third act. Chris Struckman as a filmmaker has moved away from criticizing movies as he himself is working on one and understands what's <laughs> and understands the difficulties that go through a production. And while I'm a small fry, it is still important to respect people's work while offering genuine critique and not performing exaggeratedly on camera. For the camera. Yes, the dialogue was underperforming at times, but hey. Now that it's out, and if some sort of sequel wants to be made, producers and screenwriters can watch this back in hindsight and review. Do these lines sound natural? Could we have directed her to use a different inflection in her voice? Should this conversation between these two characters remain static in place? Or should they be moving around? Should they be doing gestures? Should this conversation exist or should we cut it? 
or even changing the tone of dialogue. There's a series of lines when Cassandra is in the taxi with the three girls in the back. I wish there was more emphasis in this scene, but I couldn't help but feeling all... <sighs> So Cassie's driving, Julia, Anya, and Maddie are in the back, and all of a sudden the radio goes off with a police search for Cassie. Being innocent, and I forgot the lines word for word, but Cassie says something close to this. Wait a minute, what? I saved you guys, are you serious? I can't believe this. Something like that where it's very calm and there wasn't urgency in her voice, a bit whiny and not defiant. Wait a minute, what? I saved you guys, what are you talking about? I can't believe this, are you serious? Wait a minute, what? That wasn't me, I saved you guys. Are you serious? <laughs> I can't believe this. You know, so something like that. I could go on and on just delivering that line in different ways, but you get the gist of what I would have preferred her to be. Act like you care. Fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're not, we're not shitting on it. I truly don't know where things go south during a production with so many people at hand, especially the director and actor who... The actor is the, the vessel delivering the lines, whereas the director is sitting there making sure everything is fine. The director has the power to direct. I have been an extra twice and there are so many goddamn moving parts that I can see how things get lost in the moment with so many people long work hours with a budget and schedule in hand. It's definitely not an excuse because then we would never have amazing movies, but it can lead to something that eventually you might not be able to fix. But then you have reshoots to fix errors along the way. I don't wanna get into it right now. Why were Ezekiel's lines kind of weird and murky? Did anyone catch that? It's like they were recording without a mic or something. Honestly, I did not expect that part to be as long as it was with a thousand words. I wrote it straight from the head. Curious as to what I could add towards the movie faltering, I came across an article from Comic Book Resources. Let the fun begin. So while Googling Matt Web, I came across this article here. Director defends absence of Spider-Man connections, which pretty much it's because they want to focus on just Madam Web and not expand too much, which Perfect, I mean, it makes sense, I get it. But then I scroll down to the end and I see this sentence right here. Johnson previously alluded to major script changes being necessitated during Madam One production and has hinted that she may never watch the movie after expressing concerns. Which I actually really hate. If there's one thing I can side with is, if the main worker of this unit is unsatisfied with the trajectory that this project has plummeted down to, then maybe one shouldn't be as careful when providing critique. It should be okay to dunk on something that went through a rug pull of smoke and mirrors. You freaking ordered a PS5 and got a Nokia. Drastic changes. Madam Webstar addresses significant rewrites during production. I'm not going to read this whole thing. This will be in the description. Madam Web lead actor Dakota Johnson admits the final version of the upcoming Sony Spider-Man Universe film wasn't the one that was pitched to her initially, as the blockbuster underwent many script changes during production. Johnson suggested a necessitated... Jesus Christ. Rewrites for Madam Web were more than the usual expected amount for a movie. There were drastic changes and I can't even tell you what they were. It's unknown if fans will ever see the original version of Madam Web. Which we're not gonna see it. <laughs> Dakota Johnson says she hasn't seen Madam Web and probably won't. Despite appearing at multiple premieres for the film, she hasn't actually sat down to watch Madam Web. I haven't actually seen the movie, I probably won't. I don't know when I'll see it. Someday. <laughs> Did you see the movie? I haven't. You know more about it than me. And then I saw this one line, which totally makes sense from when she was on SNL. Madam Web is like if AI generated your boyfriend's perfect movie. She's not a happy camper. One more for Dakota. It was absolutely psychotic to film Madam Web with a blue screen. I don't know if this is going to be good at all, which isn't really uh, a major headline. I'm just throwing this in here for a <laughs> Fuel to the fire! <laughs> but I trusted S.J. Clarkson. She worked so hard and she has not taken her eyes off this movie since we started. This wasn't what Dakota had signed up for, but she wrote it through to the end. This is yet another result of studio interference and to be quite frank, man, I'm upset. Here's some stuff about the director that I found out after reading all that Dakota stuff. Fans demand justice for Madam Web director because of an entirely different MCU project. Madam Web director S.J. Clarkson has been associated with Marvel for a long time. She previously directed episodes of Jessica Jones, The Defenders, and of course, Charlie Cox's Netflix show Daredevil. On a podcast, she said, it's obviously a big, massive movie, so that's kind of different. 
Her latest flick starring Dakota Johnson was met with severe criticism, but recalling her previous works for Marvel, some fans came in to support the director. Some fans utterly pointed out that it was not Clarkson to blame. The foundation of Madam Web is based on a poor script and poor performances, some claimed. Funny as hell that High Top Alex is featured here, I fucking love that guy. It's wild what she can do when she's working off a good script and good writing. I don't... Nice. It's almost like individual directors aren't the problem and it's Sony. Daredevil is an amazing show. It blew my mind when I first watched it and I couldn't believe that I had waited so long to see it. And this is, honestly, I think this is really unjust and not fair at all to S.J. Clarkson, who deserved so, so much better. At the end of the day, whatever happened behind the scenes, I'm sure everyone tried the best that they could. Reminds me of Henry Cavill falling out of love with The Witcher after being so excited to be casted. I promise you, I envisioned an idea and tone for this video, but that minimal research left a bad taste in my mouth. Let's proceed with the discussion on what did I know about Madam Web. Got me fucked up, man. Let's do some voiceover as it's easier to edit than me memorizing a line and messing up six times. This video doesn't deserve all my effort and energy after reading that BS. The amount of people I personally know with any knowledge of Madam Web is probably two. And where do I know her from? Drum roll! <laughs> of course, the animated Spider-Man from 1994. Such a fun cartoon and a good encyclopedia for familiarizing yourself with Spidey villains, especially the first season. I actually haven't finished it yet. I have 12 episodes left with feature Madam Web. And from what I've read, I'm missing out on some good ass lore. From what I remember, she would pull Peter into this unknown ass void and sort of offer guidance to him that there was a greater threat looming in the future. Her words were sometimes mysterious and not helpful at all, aggravating the college student Parker in his endeavors. She is indeed connected to the web of life and destiny, and I really look forward to learning more about that across all properties, whether it be animated, live action, or even the games. When the Madam Web movie was first announced, I was pretty excited that they were actually going to bring this illustrious, mysterious, all-knowing spider figure onto the big screen as the main focus. By the end of the movie, when the fireworks were blowing up, I had created a theory that Ezekiel was going to poison Cassie up to the point where her myasthenia gravis was going to kick in, blinding and paralyzing her, and so the reason the three girls were going to kill him was for revenge. It didn't pan out that way, but she did lose her bodily functions in the fight. And what a shame too, I think Dakota's character did pretty well in the field. Our last section, earlier I said the action wasn't anything to write home about, but as I think about what I want to say, maybe it was. I thoroughly enjoyed Ezekiel's fighting when he was in the suit. A different type of Spider-Man in combat was portrayed. The epic portions of this movie didn't last too long, so when another one appeared, I was hype. I already glistened over the visuals of this movie, but too bad we didn't get to see much of that ethereal work. Cassie being pushed out of her body by an araña. All that Doctor Strange jazz is what I'm talking about when it comes to visuals. Cassie has this nightmare in the diner where she was talking to the villain. The splicing and glitching and disorienting teleportation was absolutely stellar. One point to visuals and editing. This movie had some nice cinematography as well. At least I think. There were some sexy shots. This one is so random but at the beginning, the city was super blurred and slowly shifted to focus. I know, nothing crazy, but dude, I love that sort of thing. Sometime after the diner, Ezekiel is on the phone with his underling, and the camera shoots the side of the building in a swiping upside down motion. I, I don't know how to describe that. I whispered to my cousin, that was so unnecessary, but cool. They did flop at the end when Cassie pulled Maddie, I believe, to the side, and rather than creating a slow-mo moment, the frames dropped. <laughs> Why? 2003, am I right? Oh yeah, speaking of the year, I love the little cues to the time period as well, with references to an old Beyonce poster, Britney Spears, and one character being astounded that the other had a cell phone. How did these girls get their powers? Look, I don't know. It's a super odd thing to put at the end when they're suited up, but whatever. It plays into the whole future thing and what they'll be. If these characters continue to exist, I hope we get to see their origin and not thrust into a world where they're already super. It is about Madame Web and not them, so I'll let that slide. Overstuffing is a no-no. I mean, I swore this was going to be a movie about three spider women with Cassandra acting as their guy in the ear in the third act to defeat Ezekiel, and even the beginning alludes to that, but F me, right?
Last but not least, from what I remember, I really like how they handled her powers in the beginning, where we as a viewer almost have to be just as confused about them as she was. What are the parameters of her powers and will she magically learn how to trigger them on the spot as part of her hero's journey? When that medical homie died in the ambulance crash, I was so skeptical. I kept asking myself, he's going to live, right? She's going to go back in time at some point, right? Nope. It seems to be a one chance reset, so this outcome was definitive. Damn. So now we conclude. I'm mad this movie was supposed to be something else because at first I had tackled this idea with trying to respect what it was, but the fact that it was just scribbled and fucked. I hope our four ladies have some heroic movie redemption at some point. After I scripted this whole video, I then opened up a can of worms regarding the movie's actual production, how long filming took, where the story could have might have gone, but I'm done. I'm done here. I'm tapping out. If anybody's watching this, I'd actually be down to looking more into this movie <laughs> and talking about it. Justice for Madam Web! I hope you enjoyed this video. It was certainly more of an easier script to write, and I'm just so invested in the lore of this movie now. I accidentally created an investigation and I need saving. Have you subscribed yet? Love what you like, my friends. Protect your energy. One Love is up next. And if I'm missing anything I wanted to add in here, I'll create a short bonus section after this. And if not, see you soon. Oh yeah, I forgot something. Adam Scott's character is Ben Parker, Uncle Ben. Emma Roberts is Mary Parker, Peter's mom. And they were playing that guess my baby's name game. Dude, that flew over me. I didn't even know, I don't even think I knew Adam's name or, or Emma's name. <laughs> ben is a real ass brother-in-law helping her get to the hospital. I hope this video was refreshing outside of the assembly line shit talking videos out there. See ya.